What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video we're continuing our nutrition series for students and today we're going to talk about basic nutrition tips. And with me I hear of Lauren, one of my classmates, self-proclaimed nutrition expert on the internet, giving you guys advice. So Lauren, what are we talking about? Okay, first I'm not a nutrition expert. I give you this information just for you to use it however you'd like. This is by no means medical advice and should not be taken as such. However, I do want you guys to be healthy, so I'm going to give you some health tips. Um, to start off, it's the new year. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how can I be healthier? How can I feel better? How can I start this new year off amazingly? Well, you can do it by your diet. So, some of you may be thinking, all right, how do I eat healthy? What do Jenny I do? Craig. What do I do? Do I call Weight Jenny? Watchers. No. You don't, need to, you don't need to do that. Okay. You just need to understand yourself. So a lot of you are pre-meds, right? So you're a type A personality and you like to keep track of things. So Data this, is key. This exercise is going to be perfect for you. What I would recommend for anyone who's starting a new a, a, like eating style or diet is to keep a food journal. So have you ever tried keeping a food journal before? I've never had a journal, let alone a food journal. I'm sure you've had a journal. But, <laughs> but, okay, a food journal is basically what it sounds like. You keep track of your foods. You keep track of when you eat them, what you're eating, and then if you want to be super gunner, you keep track of how these foods made you feel after you ate them. And to be like extra, extra like uh, informed, you can keep track of it 15 minutes after you eat, an hour, and then two hours. And I know that's a lot of information, but if you're trying a new diet or you're trying something that's supposed to change your life, you want to see if this is having an effect. You Correct. want the data and you want the evidence. That's a good point. So um, part of going into a food journal is you want to think of what are you going to change? And so Mo asked me earlier, you know, what are some health tips that you'd give? And I think the best thing that I, best advice I can give is that you guys already know what you need to do. Right. So what you can do is think about it like this. I already know what I need to change. If, if my thing is, you know, I, I've been eating a lot of sweets, you know, because of the holidays. And I love my sweets, but maybe I should cut down a little. Okay, that's great. You've acknowledged that this is what you want to change and you want to change it. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we got to have a plan. Got a plan. You can't, you can't say I'm never eating a cookie again. We know that's not going to work. It's possible. Because what happens, this happens with everyone. You say, I'm never eating a cookie again. And then somehow that box of Oreos ends up at your apartment and you ate the whole thing. And you're like, okay, well, I'll never eat another one after this. No, right. that never works. Right. You have to, have to, have to have a backup plan. So what you can do is you can say, I'm going to designate three days a week where I get to have my cookies. Okay. So it can be like, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You're going to have your cookies ready. You're going to know which ones you're going to eat, and you're going to know how many you're going to eat. Okay. And that's what, you have a plan, and you stick with it. Then Tuesday night, when you think, gosh, I really want a cookie right now. That was a really terrible day at yeah. school. You say, okay, well, now I have Wednesday. Wednesday's my cookie day. I can wait for that. Absolutely. And it's just like we talked about when it comes to taking breaks when you're studying or you know staying motivated. You know, having something to look forward to or having, you know, that day where you get to cheat Absolutely. or you get to do whatever you want, that's what you look forward to. Absolutely. So keeping the food journal, I think, can be really helpful. And then another thing is just being aware of the portion sizes. So I That's mean, a key point. I, have, I am oblivious to it. I just eat as much as I like. And for some people that works, though, I have to admit, some okay. people are, are good self-regulators, other people not so much. But believe it or not, our body and our mind uses a lot of visual cues to help us understand when we're full. Okay. So, for example, they, this is a really cool study that I just have to talk All about because right. I think it's so funny. Okay, so they gave people who went to the movies, they let them have this bag of free popcorn. Okay. And one group, they gave them a large bag of popcorn, and it was stale popcorn. Hmm. Like nasty stale, yeah. like a couple days old. And then another group they gave them, like, you know, a medium-sized bag of normal popcorn. The people who were given the stale popcorn ate more than the people who were eating medium-sized mm. popcorn. And they knew it was stale, but it was in a bigger bag. And so part uh -huh. of it is, you know, sizes. Like, so how do you know when you're done? How do you know when you're full? A lot of people base it on, oh, well, you know, when the bowl's empty. That's a good point. There's another experiment they did where they had people enjoy a nice 
bowl of soup. Okay. What they didn't know is they kept refilling the soup <laughs> through a hole at the bottom of the bowl. And the people who had the continuously refilling soup, they were told to just, you know, eat until you're done or, you know, whenever you're full. Wow. They consistently ate more. Wow. So you use a lot of visual cues. So why am I bringing this up? Well, you can estimate portion sizes using very simple everyday objects, or you can just do little things like eating off a smaller plate or measuring out your foods before you eat them to keep track. I actually do the smaller plate thing and it works. Really? I don't know how, yeah. Yeah, but that's one thing that I like to do and I think it's just very helpful. There is a sense of I'm full when this is gone. Absolutely. And if you have a big plate, you see a lot of empty space, you think, ah, I really didn't get that much. Right. So any other tips that you use for you know, staying healthy or anything else? You know, I, I don't know how I do this. Like, I physically eat large quantities in one sitting. Even though people tell you you shouldn't do it. But I but I kind of cheat in the sense that I'll just give myself more protein and like more salad. And I can just eat a lot more of it. Even though it's like a healthier food, it's a larger quantity. And like the quantity makes me happy. So I believe there's this, um, I think it's the book or like it's called like the volumetrics method where it's like eat more but weigh less. And one of the principles behind that is when you eat a lot of like very fibrous foods and low calorie foods like, you know, salad and veggie, like steamed vegetables, mm -hmm. you can eat a big bowl of those and probably not, you know, you feel fuller because there's more fiber in there and it just, it's bulkier, it takes right. up more space, but the calories are lower. So that's sort of balancing it out. And I think that's another strategy, especially if, you know, you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to just eat healthier to, you know, eat more and stay fuller because you might be used to eating larger quantities right. but choose the healthier foods. It, it's a simple option. Yeah. Like as a guy for some reason I just enjoy eating more. I don't know why. I so, think everyone enjoys eating okay, more. Okay, it's kind of so I just chose to eat more healthy stuff. Yeah. And I get to eat what I want. And also know that you know not every diet will work for you. You have to really tailor it to yourself That's a good and point. you know how you're feeling. I mean there are days where <coughs> your diet is going to be different. And, you know, there's lots of stuff out there that says, oh, you should eat every four hours. Or, no, you should only eat three times a day. Yeah. Well, figure out what works for you. And that's where the food journal can really come in handy. So, for those of you who are up for the challenge, we have what's called the breakfast Ooh, challenge. This is a lot of fun because I think it will really show you how foods are affecting your body. So, the breakfast challenge is, for seven days, you're eating a different thing for breakfast. And you need to keep track of how you feel after you eat it 15 minutes later, an hour later, two hours later, and then what you eat for lunch and how like hungry you felt at lunchtime. Okay. So the, the purpose of this is, is, again, how do these foods affect you? And you can basically tailor your own menu for the seven days, but some general ideas are, you know, day one, eat some pancakes and syrup. Sounds good. Day two. Eat some whole grain toast with, you know, some scrambled eggs. Day three, you can try a donut. Day four, just do coffee or tea okay. or, you yeah, know, no breakfast. Day five, maybe like a piece of fruit and cereal. Day six, you know, I'm, I'm kind of running out of ideas. You can have some yogurt and a piece of fruit. Day seven, let's try some oatmeal with some okay. nuts in there. Um, and, you know, try these different things. See how they make you feel, what works for you. A lot of people find that eating breakfast in the morning is really helpful for them throughout the day. So that might be a simple step towards eating healthier is actually eating breakfast. Because I know a lot of college kids right. skip breakfast and you know think that they don't have the time. But I think it's true. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I just enjoy eating, so I agree with that. <laughs> All right, so let's hit on three topics that we really need to clear up for these guys. Number one, let's talk about what we eat for breakfast and why. Number two, energy drinks. Should we touch them? And then number three, how do our, because you mentioned not all diets are going to work for everyone. Yeah. So us being classmates, you would assume we all eat the same food, but we don't. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how our diets just differ. Okay. Okay, so number one, breakfast. Breakfast. So breakfast is... What do you like? What do I like for breakfast? Yeah. Okay, my favorite breakfast is I make myself an egg white omelet with spinach and salsa. And I'll have either Sounds a piece good, of whole grain toast with some non-fat cream cheese on it and a little bit of almond butter or... Um, uh, Greek yogurt, and I get the plain Greek yogurt, add in a little bit of stevia, and occasionally some like fresh fruit. So, and coffee, I need to have my cup of coffee. Cup of joe. So that sounds like a gigantic breakfast, like why are you eating so much for breakfast, and like, how do you even have time to make it? Well first of all, it starts my day off 
perfect because I'm full, I'm ready to go to class, I'm ready to focus, and yeah, it takes a little bit of time to make, but that's my time to just wake up and, you know, get ready for the day and think about, oh, this is what I have going on. So really, like, you don't have time for breakfast, I think you do. Just, just get it. You can make time. Just make time. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing that you asked me about were energy drinks. So energy drinks have risen in popularity among our age group. Right. Rock stars, dramatic. Red Bulls, I mean, they advertise like crazy. Yeah, I'm sure there's an advertisement right on the side right now about, about one of those things, and hopefully we don't get sued by talking about them. <coughs> this um, but just as an aside, uh, high levels of caffeine have been shown to interrupt your sleep, increase anxiety, and they're really, really a bad idea for anyone who has like a heart problem. And hopefully um, you already know whether or not you have any of these sort of conditions already. Yeah. But you may find that you know having caffeine past even two o'clock in the afternoon affects your ability to go to sleep. Mm. If you're already anxious about school and you know stressing out about exams, having more caffeine because right. you think, oh, it'll help me power through things, might make your anxiety worse. So these energy drinks are usually not the best choice. Also a lot of them tend to be very high in sugar right. so that's another thing we're eating this you know sugar that's going straight into our bloodstream causing this spike and then drop in blood sugar which is not going to make <coughs> you feel so great and if you're wondering what is she talking about the spike and drop in blood sugar we have a fantastic video on carbohydrates that you should definitely check out link in the description below and then the third thing that you brought up was how our diets just differ from what we like to eat right so you know what everyone is different and the dietary advice that I'm giving, again, is just advice. Take it with a grain of salt and figure out what works for you. I think the best way to identify what's going to work for you is honestly keeping a food journal and keeping track and having that evidence. But if that seems like too much, there are apps on your phone that you can download right. to make it super easy to, you know, at least just keep track of the foods. You always have like, you know, a little notepad or, you know, something on your phone where you can keep a little note for yourself. Um, but in general, find what works for you, try different things, and if one thing doesn't work, don't get discouraged, just try something else. But do what you can to keep yourself healthy, stay motivated, and study hard. And I think an example of that is for me, I, I, I like carbs more than you do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm a very carby person. So for me, I, I tried going low carb and I didn't like it. I didn't, I, I was unhappy. So for me, I had to have my brown rice. I had to have some type of carbs. Right. And I don't think you have that carb addiction that I do. I have a frozen yogurt addiction. So. Froyo. Yeah, I, I make time for that. You know, you got to figure out what works for you. It's not going to be the same for everyone. And just because, you know, some celebrity lost, you know, 30 pounds going on this one diet. You should do it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't recommend that. Also, yeah, yeah. just, you know, tip out there, anytime you're getting dietary advice from these online websites or, you know, any other source, anything that tells you you're going to have dramatic weight loss in a very short period of time, I really encourage you to be a little bit wary of it. Um, what's really important is that you're making lifestyle changes and not just quick dietary changes for right. a month or two weeks. That's a great point. So that's why we're saying, you know, choose things that you can live with. Mo can't live with being away from carbs. That's fine. He picks healthier alternatives. And, you know, it's really important to identify what you can and can't live without. And don't try to deprive yourself. Just right. keep yourself happy and do what works for you. It's definitely an individualized process. Excellent. All right, anything else? Nope, that's all I got. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this last video on nutrition. We have another series coming up on what should you be eating for step one and during the exam. Stay tuned, and as always, enjoy your studies.